watching Notes at Nine. Hello, and welcome to Notes at Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 197, sending alert messages to an X page. Users like to know what's happening. Uh, call them crazy. Okay, so this is another show from my uh, epic uh, final uh, X page MW Lug 2016 presentation. Everything in this presentation, all the other ones in this uh, series, I guess, um, is available on GitHub, and you can download it from there. Um, and I kind of went through, uh, uh, I guess, a, bre a bit of this in the last episode. I probably should just did all in one, but that would have really messed up my numbering then because I want to get to 199. Um, so what's what's this demo about? What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about a combo box. I'm going to throw a combo box on the page, and we're going to look again. The best way to feed a combo box is with select item groups and select item, and, and I have talked about that on the show before, and uh, a real podcast would have probably put that name on there. But if you go to X Pages TV and search for combo box or something like that, I forget, um, there'll be uh, more explanation on, on this technique. Um, we're going to use a Java class to aid in outputting Bootstrap alerts. So so Bootstrap has this like colored div, uh, red uh, for danger, like blue for info, green for success kind of thing. So we're going to use that. Um, so this, this Java class is going to become an object. It's going to live in the request scope. Why the request scope? Because once it's fed, we want it to be done with. So these are just kind of like the uh, ideally intended to be response messages to the user. Uh, I'm going to have a custom control to display this um, this um, manage bean, the, the data for these alerts, so you can add it to any page you want. Um, this class is kind of specific for Bootstrap. It's got some style, some methods in there so, to set, like a set, uh, I think, success and set error, and it uses bootstrap classes, but of course you could change it to be any CSS framework you wanted. Um, it's not a, it's not a replacement for display errors. I, I wish it could be. Uh, I just don't know how to get those. I wish I could, you know, intercept, you know, if there's any display errors, you know, stuff in there. Uh, it may be possible, but uh, I don't know how to do it. Um, I'd love to be able to get those error messages into this as well, and then I'd only need one thing on the page. Uh, but so right now it's just intended to kind of like, you know, document saved, right? or document it not saved uh, because of this. You know, it's, it's just to get messages back. You know, you are not authorized, um, database full, you know, whatever. It's stuff that, that your logic would determine. Okay, so I'm gonna use this, um, a managed bean, uh, and, I, and I'm gonna we're gonna go through a, a new object that I've created called page message. Which is a stupid name, I'm sure, but uh, I'm not good at naming this stuff. Um, it's gonna be in request scope. Bean. It's going to be in the faces config, so it's easily available from uh, server-side JavaScript for this one, uh, if need be, which is uh, does kind of come in handy a little bit here. Um, and that's what the face config looks like. Um, so inside this page message class, we're going to have an enum. And if, if you haven't seen an enum yet, and God knows I, I, have, I struggle with enums myself or so, it's kind of like a combo box for programmers. You know, so it's, it's a Java thing and a, another language thing. It's not in JavaScript as far as I know. Um, and it allows you to basically, if you want to, you know, use this success, uh, you know, variable, or you, you want to set something to success, the and it's if you use an enum to hold success or warning or danger or alert or so, if you misspell it in your Java code, it, it'll let you know. So it's better than just like typing something in inside of, you know, double quotes uh, of value and trying to make sure you get it spelled the same way each time. Uh, enum is, I like to say, it's like a combo box for programmers uh, in a way. So hopefully we'll, we'll see that. Um, this method also has a, or this class also has an is valid. So it knows if there's any messages or not. So the custom control will not render if there are no messages sent to it. You have the ability to append a message. Uh, to it as many as, as you want and you can set the success and error uh, there's shortcuts there just to make life a little easier and there there is a static method and, and Devin Olson uh, who I work with um, helped me with this um, so there's a static method in there to try to make it a singleton so you might end up wanting to have this object but different pieces of code might might feed it right so your page controller might be feeding it maybe the page controller calls a different class and you're doing additional work in there uh, which is actually what i was doing um, so you want to make sure you get the same object all the time so there's a static method to make sure that 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 happens
Okay, so from the base page controller, so this is not that abstract object thing, um, but in the base page controller, I'm going to have a method in here that, that's, that returns get, and again, stupid name, but I have a method that says get message. So, so what that means is any page controller that extends the base page controller can return this get message. And if you look at it, it says return capital page message. So capital P, capital M. So that's the object. So, so what that is kind of telling you, since, since I've not created the object at that point in time, is, is that's a static method in there. So what a static method is, method is in Java, it's a, it's a type of method you can call without having to first pre-create the object. Okay, so what that method will do, it'll, it'll basically it'll go into memory and and you know and, and get find it. You know, it'll use the variable resolver to find that managed being that's floating out there um, that has already been instantiated and return that. So that's kind of an important concept. And then again, once you have once you have this, so on any page I want, all I have to do is do this dot get message dot set set success to change the color to green. And then this dot get message dot append message, and then whatever it is I want to say. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, so let's look at this uh, demo. Okay, so we're gonna click here on page and message and see what it looks like. And and all all it is, is is I've got now this is the first part of what we talked about the select items and there's select item groups here. So you see there's a group DC group for Marvel, and I can click on uh, one of them. And, oh, look, it's, it's showing me an error message. Well, it's, it's not really an error message. Green Arrow really is Oliver Queen. I just set the color to be an error an error message. Um, there's Batman, error, and then Marvel, because their movies are better uh, than DC movies. Um, they get the success color block. Um, so you have Daredevil. We've got Wasp, because we just like to be equal opportunity. We've got green people, and we've got iron people. Um, so again, that's all it is. So all we're doing is, is the page controller is, is setting this, these messages back, right? Okay. So let's look at how all this stuff works. So let's start with, with the X page itself messages. Okay. And again, we looked at this briefly in the other show is this is my controller being created here and it's going to call this page init. Okay. And then the first combo box is the, the select items is going to come from this method called both and the value that's chosen is going to be set to hero so this will be this will call the setter you know as we're editing it or the getter as we're reading it okay and that's what it is um and then down here is somewhere there's a custom control so down here is this custom control for the for what i call bootstrap alert and if we look here at the custom controls and bootstrap alert there's not a lot going on here is there's a panel and if the the managed bean is valid so the object itself knows whether it's valid or not then it will render and then it, it has a style class it knows what style class to give it um, it has the you know the title which is a success or an error and then the body and then this this is we're not gonna worry about this right now. I was trying to get field level information in here. I forget if that works or not, but we're just gonna worry about this this top part here. And, and that's all that's really going on here. So if we look at the controller, um, where is it? Controller messages. Okay, so I've got this hero here, which is which you saw get set. And I'm making two internal maps, a DC universe and a, a Marvel universe. So the first thing that happens is page and it gets called. And because this extends a base page controller, we call these super page init. So this code is going to run. So whether or not I want this, it's going to run, which isn't going to hurt it. But it makes this available to me because I've used it that way. Okay, and then uh, if you saw the previous show, I talked about the breadcrumbs. Uh, I believe it was in the previous show. Um, so I set this breadcrumb here, um, and if we looked at that, so that's what this stuff here is. And then I'm just set. I'm just creating maps at this stage of the game. So just normal, plain maps. Okay, and then um, then th that's that. And then the the values from the combo box is controller both so get both again stupid name i know don't anyone tell jesse um so public list select item get both so it's going to return this list of select items um 
okay? And we have the ability. Again, I've got, I've got another show that's going to go into this a little better, but we can create this, this grouped options so we can make different groups. And here's a select item group. And then inside here, I've got a little loop that just goes through my map. And then it, it adds that, you know, nothing fancy here. Um, and then a second loop to get the Marvel stuff, etc. Okay, and I'm actually calling, I think, uh, do I call this add item or not? Oh, no, I, I didn't. I, I was trying to use this add item, but I guess I abandoned that. Okay, so that's just setting up the page. Okay, and then somewhere in here, um, okay, so when we set the hero uh, inside here, if it's not empty, a little check or so. If it's DC Universe, I'm just going to say this dot get message. I'm just going to set the color, set error, or this dot get message set success. If it's not DC, and then I'm going to append the hero name. So it's going to call this page message object. If we hover over here, you're kind of see page message, um, which is cr instantiated in the base controller. Okay, so let's just jump here for a minute just to show you that. So that's what. Um, this get message return. So now I don't hold this. There's no in, there's no variable in here holding this object, and there's no variable in in my specific page control controller holding that object because this is set, this is actually in the faces config as as a managed beam. So so what that means is it's just available. Whenever you need it, it's available. The first time you use it, it manages it for you, so you don't have to. So how do we make sure we get it? Well, that's done inside our page message object. So there's a um, a static method in here, and that's not it. I think it's at the bottom. So right here, get page message. So all this does is it uses the the variable resolver from the extension, the X pages extension library. And this is kind of a more recent one because it only takes one variable. Um, so if you have an earlier one, you might have to, like pass the faces context and and stuff like that. Um, and then if if it's null, if it doesn't exist, then it's going to create it and put it in there. So I guess we don't need to, maybe we don't need it in the face config, but it's still safer to use it because if we're not using it, then at least that custom control will, will it won't, but won't die. I think if, if I didn't have it in the faces config, then it would be a problem. So it should just basically be there. And what, and this just ensures it's like a singleton it ensures we always get one object in the database that, that it comes from. So what else does this, this class do well it extends the abstract object which gives me the ability to do my print statements if I want this dot it should give us the ability to do that uh, oh I'm in I'm in an enum there I'm not quite sure that's gonna make it life good yeah there's the this dot console I thought I had to print one too. Yeah, there it is. Okay. I'm not sure why that didn't come up in the enum. Um, but again, enums enum is not my best friend. Um, I can barely use them, but but they are cool. Uh, and whenever I have to use them, I end up calling Devin. Um, so he helps me. But this is what the enum looks like. So there's success, and then this is the style class that will get returned. Info, and then the style class. And then uh, again, I'm not the best at explaining this. Uh, so uh, I guess just look at the code um, and stuff like that. But it works, and, and, and it works very well uh, for that. So so when, when the page message gets installed, and you can kind of see where, where it uses the enum, we can say page message, so again, this is more static, and then style class, and then info. So we can't possibly misspell that. You know, we can't do um, this dot style equals page message okay so again it's helping us and if I did info it's, it, it'll fix it you know or if I did something that doesn't exist Dave um, it, it'll yell at us so again this is this is a big programmer help this this enum stuff this is powerful stuff okay so so this is the constructor so it just sets up the default the default is just this info message um, and then this is the other one that's used a lot um, this append message, and I got uh, like an override if you wanted to pass in one thing here. And this was my attempt at, at field names, uh, which we're not going to go into. Um, so here I'm printing out to the console. Um, I'm going to say this dot body, and what is this dot body? It's a, a string builder. 
that comes up here. So somewhere up here is a string builder for body. And so we're going to we can append as many li items line items as we want basically and we're going to use the system.get property line separator so hopefully if you're on linux or mac or whatever you, you, know, you just have new lines for everything and then we mark this dot valid is true by default valid is false because a little boolean if you don't declare this that means it's false by default um, so it won't render if there's no values in there and again you can kind of look through the rest of it there's not too much going on here um, I again, I did have just these couple little uh, quick hits, you know, helpers rather than me typing that enum all the time in the code. I just made a quick set error method, which will say this set style and then style class dot danger, and then put the title in. So it's just a very little handy thing. Uh, this uh, I don't have an example for this. This was my attempt at getting messages kind of passed through from a model object. I'm not sure if I like this uh, idea yet. Um, I haven't quite figured that out yet. So that's that's what it is. Um, and that's what allows us to get um, just messages back. And I use this all the time these days to try to easily get messages back to the user so they at least know what's happened. This is Now, if you're changing page, that, that would be, you need something else. You need, um, what, what do we call that, flash scope. Or so which i don't have a demo for that right now so so this would just be if you're doing a like partial refresh and saving something on the the actual same page or maybe a full refresh would work but a page change would would not work and that's the demo um if you have any questions for me uh, here's my contact information and i thank you for your time